So the sources of tectonic stresses, we talked a little bit about them, just kind of summarize them here. You know, we have the, the plate driving stresses, that's exactly what we just talked about. So they're, they're pushed by compressional, compression forces from the mid-ocean ridges and resisted by friction at the plate boundaries, uh, at, the, at the subduction zones. The com, com, uh, uh, frictional resistance to subduction zone. But, so the other thing is the drag forces on the base of the plate. So on the bottom of the plate is, is you know, the mantle, which is, is mostly molten, but near the top, right, in the lithosphere, it, there could be some, some solid material as well, right? And so you sort of have this very, very viscous, almost solid, you know, there's a transition zone where it goes from liquid to solid, and in that zone, as there's motion across that, there's a lot of resistance to that motion. Right? So you guys know a lot about fluids, and there's some viscous forces that can develop associated with the motion of fluids. So you have a very, very viscous fluid, essentially, in magma. Right? And so as you're moving a solid over the top of it, there's there's those viscous forces resist that motion, and because it, they're, you know, because it's so viscous and it's such a vast area that it's applied to, they can be significant enough to develop stress. Okay. So, like we said before, there are density anomalies. So for the most part, the aerial density is the same, right? But locally, there can be density anomalies, and that, in and, in and of itself, can cause um, uh, stress changes. And then the other thing, plate thinning and thickening, uh, is, this is kind of interesting because it's a situation where like stress causes more stress. Because imagine that you have a plate that's being compressed, right? As you compress it, it gets thicker, right? Because of the Poisson effect, right? You know, it has to conserve volume, right? So, um, you, you, uh, you, you push on it, it gets thicker, and now that it gets thicker uh, and it has its own mass and gravity acts on that mass, right, that generates a body force in the material. Right? So gravity times density at any given, you know, generates a body force. And so then that body force creates more stress. So st in this case, the stresses that are compressing the plate are causing more stress because it's causing, you know, localized density increases that then the body forces act on and create more stress. And then, of course, plate thinning would have the opposite effect. If, if the plate was, um, it's not necessarily that plates are ever pulled on, but, but they can be relaxed. You could have a plate that is under compression and and then due to, say, fault slippage or earthquake or something, the stresses are released and you get some extension and plate thinning. Now, it's, it's unlikely that earthquake would be significant enough to cause plate thinning significantly, but um, there are other mechanisms that would cause plates to relax and get thinner, and therefore localized densities would vary in there would be, the body forces would get smaller, and so then the stress field would get smaller. Uh, the plates themselves can flex, right? So this goes back to the same thing I was talking about earlier with, you know, uh, you can sort of idealize the plates as beams, long, slender beams, right? And they have some flexural rigidity, and if you bend them, right? So if you bend something, it creates strain, which leads to stress in and of itself. So um, the wavelengths of, you know, bending of the flexural rigidity, or I'm sorry, the, the, the flexure of the plates can be measured in these wavelengths, can, can be observed in some cases, and the wavelengths can be like as long as 100 kilometers. So this is, that's sort of a, I think I said a lecture and a half. Maybe I should have said a half a lecture, because uh, that's you know sort of all we're going to cover with respect to uh, structural geology. And again, the reason we care about it in this class is mainly because it's the source of stress. Right? 
And now, now that we sort of know where the stress has come from, we're going to take the time to use our mechanics knowledge to solve some important problems in petroleum engineering. But before we can